Hello everybody, this is Tech Hut, and this is a video of what we're going to be doing is a good old distro comparison. We're going to be comparing uh, OpenSUSE and Fedora, two of the absolute heavyweights in the sphere of Linux distributions. And before diving into some of the differences, we're going to talk about the one thing that is for sure the same. And that is that these are both RPM based distributions, meaning that their package managers will ship RPM packages, as opposed to something like Ubuntu or Debian using apt and shipping Debian packages. Other than that, though, they are built completely different. So that does beg the question, which one is better for you? Kind of like how I'm trying to get better at coming up with sponsor segues. The NAND Me NX7000 is like many popular expensive toothbrushes, but at an affordable price. Overall, the item is sleek, well-built, and fully functional with five dental care solutions, including sensitive, clean, white, polish, and gum care. Each of these have three speeds, giving you a total of up to 15 modes. The 2600 milliamp battery lasts about a year, and when you do finally need to charge it, there is a Type-C cable in the box, which is sitting next to 12 replacement brush heads, making it so you're not going to need to worry about getting replacements for quite a while. Now, I've been using this for for about a month and I could not be happier. And the affordable price we mentioned earlier can be reduced even further using the code TECHHUT9 until October 6th. So take advantage of this by checking out the link down below. So let's start off with the first thing that you do and that is actually installing your operating system. Bold Fedora and OpenSUSE feature installers that were built specifically for their distribution. Fedora uses something called Anaconda while OpenSUSE is going to be using YAS. Anaconda is pretty basic on Fedora. You basically just select your language, keyboard layout, drive, time zone, and then do just about everything else post installation. Now OpenSUSE on the other hand is completely different. The main offline image allows you to install any desktop environment between KDE, GNOME, and XFCE, as well as a generic desktop with a few server options. After doing the basic steps through the installer, you'll get the installation overview where you can customize whatever you want on the actual installer. For example, you can click this software link on the installer and install whatever addition or replacement DEs you want. Easily install tools for different desktop functions as well as different server and development use cases and easily remove things that you don't want. You can do things like change the security system, hardware, and network settings through this installer. And overall, this is just one of the best parts of OpenSUSE. So with that, let's talk about the release cycle of these two distributions. With Fedora, it is very simple. There's going to be a new release every six months or so, and that release is going to be supported for about 13 months. Fedora does have a rawhide version that lets you test the latest packages and all that, and that's in regards to Fedora Workstation. There are other additions that you can get. For example, there's Fedora Server, Fedora IoT, Fedora Core OS, as well as Fedora Silverblue, which we've actually covered on this channel previously. OpenSUSE has multiple versions, with the primary ones being Leap and Tumbleweed. Tumbleweed is a rolling release distribution meaning once you actually install it, you never have to run a full system upgrade ever again. Instead, your packages are just going to get updated, and for the most part, these are going to be newish packages, and they're going to be slightly behind other rolling release distributions, such as Arch and Solus. Now, if you don't like something like that, OpenSUSE Leap is going to be perfect. It's the standard kind of point release system with in this case, there's going to be a minor release every year or so, and then there's gonna be a major release every three or four years. And all that's not to say that Fedora doesn't have a long-term support version, because essentially Red Hat Enterprise Linux, or RHEL, and all of the clones are basically based on Fedora, as Fedora is the upstream of all of those systems. Example, RHEL 9 is based on Fedora 34, and kind of like Leap, RHEL itself is going to have a new major release every three or four years with minor releases every six months. And of course, RHEL is a paid distribution. However, there is alternatives such as CentOS Stream, Alma Linux, Rocky Linux, and many other clones. And they all basically do the exact same thing. So if you kind of prefer Fedora, but you're looking at a point release structure, you could get a rail clone or 
take another look at uh, OpenSUSE Leap. So now let's talk about the actual desktop environments for these systems. Fedora ships with GNOME stock out of the box. And like I said, with the installation process, OpenSUSE is gonna allow you to actually pick your desktop environment during install, whether that be Plasma, GNOME, or XFCE. But with that, KDE Plasma is going to be the default selection in the installer, and KDE Plasma installation on OpenSUSE is absolutely phenomenal. But for this video, I went ahead and installed GNOME on OpenSUSE, so uh, we have more of a apples to oranges comparison over a uh, apples to bacon comparison. As of making this video, both OpenSUSE and Fedora are going to be shipping with the latest version of GNOME 42.4, and both of the GNOME desktops are almost completely stock. I do say almost though, because Fedora actually ships with the uh, background logo extension pre-installed. And it is worth mentioning that OpenSUSE Leap is going to have a slightly older software as the latest version is going to be shipping with GNOME 41. In terms of applications, both came pretty bare with GNOME applications, Fire Firefox, LibreOffice, Fedora is going to include the Fedora Media Writer, but that's really basically it for Fedora. OpenSUSE also is going to be shipping with GIMP Evolution, a couple games, LibreOffice Base, and Math, which isn't in Fedora, and of course their YAST suite of applications. It also for some reason ships GNOME Music instead of Rhythmbox, which actually does make sense because Rhythmbox kind of sucks. But what makes less sense is they ship Gedit instead of the new GNOME Text Editor. And you can make your OpenSUSE a bit more minimal by actually uh, removing stuff during that installation process. But with the default settings of OpenSUSE Tumbleweed took up about two gigabytes more than just a base install of GNOME. So with that, let's talk about some of the features that are exclusive to each one of these distributions. Fedora's biggest exclusive is Copper, which is sort of like PPAs, but unlike PPAs, they're actually good. However, Fedora doesn't have many exclusive features compared to OpenSUSE, because its goal is to be more of a pure and plain Linux distribution. OpenSUSE, on the other hand, has quite a bit of exclusives with the main thing being YAST. YAST is basically like a control center that lets you customize basically everything about the system. It can act as a package manager, edit things like Grub, firewall settings, and users, and do things like set up hypervisors for your virtual machines. My only real problem with this is a lot of the functions of the control panel in YAST can be done other places with a more user-friendly UI. For example, package management, the GNOME Software Center is much easier. For creating new users, you could just use GNOME settings, partitioning, GNOME disks, and of course, if you're in, in KDE, there's alternatives for the uh, various KDE applications as well. We'll talk about that a little bit more later. I'm not the biggest fan in the world. Another thing that's uh, kind of an exclusive to OpenSUSE is the Open Build Service. And I say kind of because it can build packages for other distributions, and it acts like OpenSUSE as a AUR or copper. So speaking of open build service, let's go ahead and talk about packages. As mentioned earlier, both are RPM distros, but they do use different package managers. Fedora uses DNF while OpenSUSE is going to be using a zipper. Now in my unprofessional opinion, the, uh, the package managers are definitely the, uh, the weakest point of both of these distributions as both are incredibly slow. Both Fedora and OpenSUSE have a very modern and stable package base, making them wonderful options if you do want that bleeding edge system. Now Leap, however, does have a bit older package base, but it's generally modern enough, and you're not having like a Debian Red Hat situation where a lot of the packages are like two years old. One thing OpenSUSE does kind of do poorly though is names. They have a different naming scheme for their packages compared to other distros, so instead of installing the Firefox package, you have to install Mozilla Firefox. And yes, that is case sensitive. And with that, we're gonna have to talk about our first boot experience in both of these distributions. When you boot up Fedora, you're gonna get a couple dialogues to set some things up, such as the welcome screen with privacy options, enabling third-party repos, connecting online accounts, and your user account. OpenSUSE, on the other hand, has had most of everything set up in the installer, so you're just gonna get a little welcome prompt with some documentation, some links, and a uh, button to enter the software store. Now, overall, I think I personally prefer Fedora Fedora's kind of workflow with this as it makes it really easy to install Fedora on somebody else's computer and allow them to set up their user account and all that stuff kind of after the fact. But on the other hand, I do like how OpenSUSE does it with the documentation and all those links in their little welcome thing. It just kind of helps out the new user 
and you can of course disable it so it doesn't show up anymore. So now let's actually talk about using these distributions. Fedora, I don't really have much to say. It's fast, it's polished, it's up to date, it's very stable and it kind of just works. There is a reason I have made several videos absolutely praising Fedora, including calling it simply the best in my review of Fedora 36, and I recently made a video called finally the perfect premium Linux experience which is about Fedora. All right, hello everybody. This is Future Brandon real quick. I was watching this and I noticed I did not say enough negatives about Fedora. It's a beautiful system, but there are things that are not perfect. Example, DNF as a package manager is simply slow. I'm not gonna do any edits here. Oh, actually that was not that bad at all. <laughs> Lots of updates. This is Norbra and I do have some customizations to make it quicker, but out of the gate, the DNF is just slow. It's as simple as that. Additionally, when you go ahead and set up Fedora for the first time, you're gonna have to use RPM Fusion to get a lot of the packages that you are gonna need, including video drivers. So there are some extra steps to get you up and going and there are some negatives. I just felt I would bring that up. So there's really not much for me to add because I it, it just works. OpenSUSE, on the other hand, has had a couple of weird quirks with it. In general, OpenSUSE is stable enough, but it doesn't seem like there has been much polish built into it. In fact, I've had manual arch installations feel a bit more polished and well put together than a uh, typical OpenSUSE installation. For one, I couldn't get internet to work on OpenSUSE Leap in a virtual machine. I opened network settings and it just straight told me instead to open up the, the YAST network configurations. And then I went ahead and fought with YAST trying to figure out how to fix it. And that just didn't work either. Another thing I noticed is trying to change my wallpaper in Tumbleweed, there was only one pre-installed wallpaper and it doesn't work in dark mode. And if only having one wallpaper is to save on bloat, why is there so many applications pre-installed? On top of that, every time I tried to install a package, it wouldn't work because of package kit running in the background. The only way to fix this was to manually kill package kit before trying to run the package manager. Another thing, like I mentioned with the packages, is just the naming scheme when you have to install things through the terminal. For example, the case sensitivity in Mozilla Firefox, stuff like that. Now, all of this is just generally things that would only affect you right once you first install OpenSUSE. And it wouldn't really come to bite you like some of the issues I had recently with like Ubuntu 22.04. But they're still kind of annoying and make OpenSUSE just seem more complicated and a, a bad distro to a new user when it's really not. Overall, Fedora definitely wins in the just user experience department. So overall, OpenSUSE does have a lot of unique features, especially if you're somebody who is well-versed in the Linux ecosystem, you're a network administrator, you probably appreciate some of the uh, graphic utilities that are included within the uh, Yast suite of packages and all that. But for most day-to-day -day people, it's not gonna be necessary. And when they do have to dive into that, some of that stuff, it's not going to be very friendly to them. For a rolling release distribution, it is incredibly stable. If you're somebody who must absolutely have a rolling release distribution, I honestly would recommend an OpenSUSE over something like Arch Linux just because of that added stability factor. Unless, of course, you need the AUR. Gotta have the AUR. Yast just kind of gives me a Windows control panel vibes with just how it's laid out. So generally, if you haven't got the obvious hint, I, uh, I prefer Fedora, but overall OpenSUSE is a solid experience for the reasons and for the people I forementioned. Make sure you check out the link down below to get some of their stuff. It helps the channel and all that. And make sure you subscribe and you ring that bell so you do not miss future content. Uh, with all that, have a beautiful day and goodbye.